Okay, so I'm on Twitter today, and this girl asked me how I became a Christian. And, um, you know, the other, I'm talking with these two girls, and one of them said, you know, you were brainwashed from birth. And I said, well, I wasn't raised Christian. And the other one's asking me, you know, why, why did I become a Christian? And this, this, girl's, this girl's kind of cool. She's a little, uh, she's a little dark. She's a little spooky. But she's, as I start to talk to her more and more, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of warming to her. I kind of enjoy her. Um, so I, I, I want to make the video both to answer her in the present and if she doesn't listen to the video, just to put it out there. Now, I've sort of talked about this a little, but it's worth going into specifically because the one thing the girl brought up, I'm sure a lot of atheists believe. You were brainwashed from birth. Well, I wasn't raised Christian at all. Matter of fact, I was raised completely and 100% secular, through and through. Technically, I was a Roman Catholic, um, but we went to church on Christmas and Easter, and that's it. I had no other contact with the religion, and nobody expected me to adopt any, any beliefs, any of the tenets of the belief system, and I could have cared less when I was in, you know, young and in, and in high school. Now, I grew up in a very, very, very secular part of the country. I grew up in Westchester County, very liberal, left-wing town. Most of my friends were, if not technically atheists, half of them were Jewish, uh, completely secular, maybe technically, you know, this person was raised Protestant or this other person here was raised Catholic, but nobody I knew was religious at all. Matter of fact, I did not meet a Christian, a, a real Christian, till I was 20 years old in college or maybe 19, but I met him at college. And I didn't know him very well. He was just some kooky guy in the dorm, and I would talk to him every once in a while. I'd, you know, I'd have a couple beers, or I'd be drunk, and I'd come home, and he'd be there, and we'd, we'd you know, rap about Jesus, and he would try to, you know, he would evangelize, as far as I know. I don't really remember the conversations that well. And, you know, I got a kick out of him. I thought he was fun, relatively harmless, nice guy, but, you know, whether he had an influence on me or not, I cannot say. That was the only Chris, only person I ever knew who was an actual Christian Christian, like evangelized and believed the tenets of Christianity. Other people I grew up with may have technically been raised in a faith, but, you know, I don't know if they actually believed that faith. They were like me. I was technically Roman Catholic, but, you know, literally more agnostic than anything else. So why did I become a Christian? Well, one day, I meet this really beautiful girl, and... It's funny because the girl I'm talking to goes, does a girl convince you to become Christian? Now, this, this girl didn't, I didn't know she was a Christian, and she didn't tell me she was a Christian. And we dated for at least a year and a half before it even came up. But, you know, coincidentally, this girl was extraordinarily good looking. And I met her in acting class, and we, we moved out to California together. Now, somewhere along the way, she told me I was pretty into New Age stuff. And uh, I wasn't obsessed with it, but I was looking for God. And I've explained this in other videos. And I was, you know, I was investigating all sorts of different things. Like the Tao Te Ching was probably my favorite. And, uh, you know, I was just into healing people. and uh, I was into checking out all sorts of different stuff. And I was starting to become convinced intellectually that there was a God. And my concept of God was very similar to Blake. You know, all religions are one. I was starting to really believe that, that there was some sort of deity and that all religions were connected to him somehow. And there was a through line between all the major world religions. Now, why did I become a Christian? It's much more specific. So this girl was a Christian, but she never really brings it up. And you would not have known by her behavior, that's for sure. <laughs> because she certainly wasn't Christian in how she acted. But she had been, you know, she had become a born-again Christian somewhere in high school, and in high school she was active, and now she walked away from the church, and let's just say she wasn't, she wasn't exactly Miss, Miss Pure and Holy. Um, leave it at that. We move out to California together, and she, she, I convince her to go to see some Christian faith healer, and she recommits her life to the Lord. I had no idea what that meant. Not. And I didn't really care, to tell you the truth. We move out to California together, and she starts attending this church called the Malibu Vineyard. She convinces me to go one night, and I don't remember exactly why I went, but um, there's some prophet dude, and he starts prophesying over me. And the things he said struck my heart, completely and utterly convicted me. Now, I don't even remember what, who that guy was, because that's not important. 
What is important is what occurred that night. Because this is the truth. Now, you can reject this claim if you want to, because this is not something I can intellectually convince you of, nor would I try. I'm just telling you what happened. Uh, I believe that night that the Holy Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit of God, revealed to me that Jesus Christ was exactly who he said he was. Now, I believe that that is a supernatural occurrence that happens by faith. I do not believe that is something I can convince people of intellectually. I believe God himself has to, has, to, has to bear witness in your heart that that is true. And I 150% believe on, on pain of death that that is the entire truth. I converted on the spot powerfully and radically to Christianity. Now, it, it presented a whole bunch of intellectual conundrums. It's part of why I empathize with the atheists, part of why I get on... Twitter and try to, you know, do these, my, my own makeshift version of apologetics. Because immediately I was like, okay, if this is true, then what about XYZ PDQ? And some of the questions that people asked me are some of the questions that were immediately popped into my mind. Well, how could the Old Testament be true? It can't be. How can Noah's Ark be true? That's obviously a, a fairy tale or a fake story. You know, I, keep in mind, I was raised secular. Okay, I wasn't raised Christian. So a lot of the whole things about Bible inerrancy and stuff like that, you know, I had no, no contact with the Bible prior to my converting to Christianity. And I believe that conversion was supernatural, 100% believe that. Um, you can reject that claim, that's, you're right, but know that I 150% will promise you, if you put a gun to my head and said, was that God speaking to you, I would say yes, yes. And I, would, I wouldn't even blink. That's how real it was to me. Now, like I said, you're free to reject that. Um, it immediately brought up a whole bunch of other stuff that I haven't necessarily always reconciled even to this day. You know, the, the ministry of reconciliation is what Jesus Christ was about, was trying to reconcile all things unto himself. And there are a thousands of really good questions that this automatically popped up, you know, why would a good God sentence people to burn in hell forever? How is that good? That's a good question. I wrestled with that for, for like seven years after I became a Christian. You know, how is it that parts of the Old Testament appear to be, you know, either mean or false? You know, so I wrestled with that too. And that's part of why I do, why I am doing what I am doing. I am trying to reconcile my active and involved faith wherein I literally believe okay, that I'm being led by the Spirit of God and doing service to God on this earth. And I'm trying to reconcile that with some of the more how I was raised and who I actually am. So that's that. And uh, I think there's more, if there's any more to the story, you know, I was way more secular than I was within anything else. I mean, if, if we talk movies, you know, bands, especially if you, get, if you get into the 80s and the 90s, I know more about it than almost anybody I know. Um, you know, the last 10, 15 years when I was a Christian, yeah, I still know a little, you know, I know your basics, but I'm not like Mr. Encyclopedia of, of pop culture, which I was in 1995, I absolutely 100% was. And, you know, so I knew pop culture way better than I know the Bible. And still to this day, I know pop culture better than I know Christianity uh, to a certain degree. So that's that.